Oh my God, I'm so hyper right now. Let me know if the headphones are a good look or not. I don't, I feel more comfortable with them, but I never know. We're trucking away on this series. We have a full stack app that we're putting together. And today we're going to put in the final piece, which is the ability to have a single item obtained from our database. Looking back at our architecture diagram, let me switch over to that. We have the ability here to create, update, delete, and list. But reading is something that we haven't tackled yet. So let me up the opacity because we're about to knock this out of the park. At the moment, API Gateway, five lambda functions by the end of this video, all going to one DynamoDB table. Here's the thing though. We have this books route and we've been calling that our base. That's our like, here's our API route slash books. That's the base. Now we're going to add on what I like to call a leaf. The leaf is going to be book ID. So slash books slash book ID. That's the leaf of it. We're going to be tackling that today. How do we add on that as opposed to just adding more stuff onto the slash books route? Now we want to go again, slash books and then parameterize it so that API gateway knows that when it receives an ID, that it belongs to a book ID. We're going to be tackling that today. Now, technically, I was just looking at the videos. Technically, there's one more video, right? We need to put this all together in a full stack application on the front end. Now we did a little bit with scanning. But we'll tackle that in the next video. Let's get all the crud old operations out of the way. Okay, if you're new here and you just found this video by happenstance, it's all good. Welcome. Like and subscribe while you're here. But in any case, we went ahead and we have our CDK back end. Next.js on the front end, CDK on the back end. And then for this stack, we have our DynamoDB table created. We're doing a little function power here where we have all of these create whatever functions and then these house our CDK code. I get it. It's not the CDK way of doing things. It's closer to SST, but I like this flavor and I think it vibes well with more of the JavaScript slash Node.js community. In any case, we need to add one more ability, and this is going to be the ability to get an item. Now we we're following this formula, create the Lambda function, set it up in API gateway, and then tie it together in our stack. So far it's been working out great. Let's go ahead and keep going with it since it's not broke. Don't fix it. So I'm going to be where are we at. We are inside of our functions directory. I'm going to create a new file and we're going to call this get item books funk. I don't know. I'm really bad at naming this stuff. Item books funk. Uh, that's the folder name, but then we also have the construct that TS file. Now we might as well just knock it out of the way because we know we're going to need it. We're going to have this main.ts and this is going to house the actual Lambda code that we're going to be having in this application. Now, in terms of the construct, let me go ahead and paste in that code for us real quick. Okay. So it should look something like this, where we have our function and it's, it's going to take in the same thing that every other function has taken. Now there's some cool things you can do with Lambda layers and things like that, that we can explore in other videos. Let me know if you're interested, but in this video, we're keeping things simple. Each Lambda is a uh, Lambda function is isolated. So that way, in this case, we have the ARN of the table. This is going to be needed for the policy right here at the bottom, but the function code itself needs the name of the DynamoDB table. So we're passing that in as an environment variable. Node.js 18 is what we've been using this entire series that allows us to use the AWS SDK version three instead of version two. And then we are getting an item, which is the policy that we have here. Nothing too crazy. Hopefully if you've been following the series, this stuff is starting to make a little bit of sense. You see the patterns, you're identifying what needs to be done and things of that nature. But in any case, let's go ahead and keep trucking it along here. We have, let's see here, that taken care of. So let's go over to our, oh, did I get these mixed up? Guys, you're supposed to, you're supposed to call me out. Paste that in here, paste this back in. You don't want to get those mixed up. And then in the main.ts file, we can explore what we have, but honestly, it's getting a little redundant. But if you're new, if you're new, let's just take a moment to look. We have a separate function here called get item. It's going to take in an ID. It has to grab this ID from the, from the route which is different, right? If you looked at our delete function in the previous example, that delete function was grabbing it from the event. We're saying, hey, event.body, give me the ID. But in this case, we're going to say we have this get item parameter. And this ID is now coming from event.path parameters. 
and we're saying, I'm going to pass in what's called a book ID. Now, this is very important why it's called a book ID, and you'll see uh, why as we flesh this out. But so this is not assuming this is copy and pasted, and we should get rid of that. But event.path parameters is basically saying something like this, where we have slash books slash, and then what is here is going to be our book ID. All right. So we have this in place. If we take a peek and look over here, we have this separate get item function. It takes in that ID. The params are what are being sent over to DynamoDB. Nothing too crazy. It's the environment variable that we had in our construct file. And then it is the marshaled, unmarshaled, meaning DynamoDB format, a way of specifying the key. It's an ID, string, and then the ID. So this is what DynamoDB needs. And then this is just what we're calling it. In terms of the actual command itself, it's this get item command. Pretty cool. Does all the work for us. And then all we're saying is, hey, if you didn't give me an ID, then this isn't going to work. I'm going to go ahead and throw a 400 error. Otherwise, I am going to check to make sure that the ID was actually found. If not 404, that thing. Then if everything is good, then we can stringify the item, send it back to them. Pretty cool. Again, making sure that we have a status code of 200. And then the headers will be allowed to allow cores access. And that's different from API gateways cores, which is an incoming request. This Lambda is handling the outbound request. So we have that in place. Now let's go ahead and put together API gateway so that it knows how to receive this Lambda function. So we're going to call this get item. Let me go over to this file real quick. And we're basically looking at this get item and it's a leaf function. And the reason why I'm calling it a leaf function is because it's not on that slash books. It's an extension from that. Now, because it's an extension from that, we have to make sure that we are one adding on a leaf resource. So let's bring this in here. We have our slash books. Let's make some room with the screen real estate. And then we have this leaf, right? It's taken in our props that leaf resource name, similar to our base resource name, which was slash books. So if we come up here, I'm just going to add it right here. And for some reason, it didn't put in the G on there. That's funny. And we want to add in uh, cores access. We do want to make sure that API Gateway has the ability to allow cores on this. So let's paste this in here. Just, and then when it comes into the actual integration itself, we have this part set up because we just wrote that Lambda function. We have our get item leaf function, meaning we're going to pass this in and it's like, cool, but how do we actually assign it? And it's the same format as all of these methods that we've made in previous videos. Definitely check those out if you're interested on how those methods came to be, but we have our leaf resource. Perfect. Now, the one thing to note right here is that the when you're parameterizing something so you could do slash books slash book id like the literal string slash book id and that's how you get those apis that are deeply nested but in our case we have slash books and then we have some kind of parameter value and it's going to be the id of the actual book so i know it looks a little funky here but as you can see on line 24 we do have these curly braces here and here and that's telling api gateway like whatever value gets passed in here it is, it's a parameter. It's not a string literal that is being passed in. So treat it as such. This is looking pretty good in terms of everything that we need. So the next thing is to hook this all together inside of our full stack API gateway stack. So we have this, it's already complaining about it. It's like, yo, you need to give me some props for the leaf resource name. This is super important because if you recall over in our construct, it was looking for, let's go to this get item main code. When it came to finding that ID, it's specifically looking for a book ID. And it's like, how does it know what that is? It knows it from here. So I'm going to give this a string just like that. And it's needed one more. It's this get item leaf function and it's the get books. Oh no, not you. That would have been bad. Let's bump you up and then let's go ahead and grab the, what do we call it? Yeah. Get item books func const. Passing the prop should all be good in terms of the function name. Uh, I do want to double check that this is all good. Books table R and then for the books table name, we have sure enough, the database name right there. What aren't you liking? Let's see here. Are we missing that? Cool. And then get item leaf funk. 
Oh, we pass in the function here. This looks good, comma, awesome. We have that in place. Let's go ahead and deploy this to see just how everything is working out, but I'm feeling good. Now this is copied over from my pets project. One thing I've been doing is just making sure the word pet doesn't show up anywhere. It looks like we're good there. In terms of policies that are generated for us, we have API gateway needing the ability to invoke that Lambda function. And then we have our Lambda function needing to call and access a, the get item command for DynamoDB. So while this is doing this thing, let me go over to Thunder Client. We'll show this. We're gonna go over here, give ourselves a little room. And we have, let's see here. We have, we need more than one item, right? I guess we're good. We have this array and this array is containing a couple items. What is another book that we can add and just to test things out? We're gonna post, we're gonna go to the body and for the title, we're going to say, oh, it's a good book, Where the Sidewalk Ends. We go, and then for the author, is it Shel Silverstein? I, I believe so. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think it's Shel Silverstein. Stein, Stein, I'm having a Baron Stein Bears moment here. But let's send this off, and we should be able to add this. Post item put successfully, where we go to get, and we're getting all of them. I did it again with the body. Send that off. You can't have a get repose, a get request with a body. Okay, so let's say we only want this book. Okay, here's the ID. We still have the other book in here. Let's double check the status. Looks like it deployed just fine. It took 91 sec or yeah, 91 seconds. If everything worked, then we need to have the ability to go here. Nothing in the body. And we're going to go to slash books slash and then I paste it in that book ID, and this should hopefully get us back the book. If I send this off, what do we get? The Primal Hunter. Did I paste in the wrong? I think I did. I think I pasted in the wrong one. You all probably got that, and we can check that easily by grabbing this one right here, pasting it, going here, hitting U, and CC. Cool. My mistake, but yeah, there we go. Where the sidewalk ends, Shell Silverstein, and everything's looking great. At the moment, just to recap, we have all of our CRUD O operations working. We just need to wire this up to the front end. And then from there, we have our full stack application. We can even go further and talk about how do you host this thing and how do you do all that crazy stuff. But in terms of a backend API with API Gateway, we did it. So pat yourself on the back if you went through all the videos. Again, if you're bouncing around and you found the one that works best for what problem you're trying to solve, let me know in the comments. I would love to see how we can better flesh this out to suit your needs. But with all that said, all good things must come to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, folks in the audience, this has been a great time. This has been another Focus Auto Solution. If you want to see more of this stuff, these long-winded split up projects, you can subscribe as always. It helps me out. It helps other people find the content out. But I'll catch you all next time. Peace.